Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the People Person Podcast. This is episode 102, presented by Good Time Media. I am your host, Wyatt Metzger, as always. And today, I'm joined by America's favorite contestant from season 19 of The Bachelorette, Nate Mitchell. Nate, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm the, everyone's favorite, but I'm like seven <laughs> on your list, so I'm, I'm down a bit. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll we'll get to that. We will address your spot in my power rankings, which is okay. completely objective, not subjective at all. Um, yeah. But I I let everyone know I can be bought. I'm very easily bought. <laughs> um, but we'll get to that. I do want to start okay. way back before you get on the show. You enter the whirlwind that is Bachelor Nation. Did you apply for this show? Were you nominated? What was that process like? I didn't apply at all, actually. You have to go through the application process, but essentially they reached out to me because whenever my buddy went on, his name is Dustin Kendrick, he yep. went on Hannah Brown season. And so uh, whenever he was doing like his intro, his B, his B roll, essentially, uh, I met one of the producers and then he liked me a lot and we just stayed in contact. And it was just a pinging back and forth for, I guess, a couple of years after that. And then if, Eventually, I, I went on in Gabby and Rachel's season, so that's kind of how I got mixed into the fray of all that. Yeah, I feel like the beginning of that process has to be really cool. Like, you're like, oh, this is exciting, maybe a new thing. And then there's like a moment where you're like, oh, shit, am I actually going to do this? Like, did you have that <laughs> moment where like, can I do this? Yeah, no, I definitely went through the process. I was like, you know what, just just go through it. And then at the end, you can make a decision. So the whole time I was like, I'm going through this, but I don't think they're actually going to go move forward with me. And they they reiterate that with you. They're like, yeah, we're here, but you're still not, you know, confirmed. It may not be anything. And then whenever it came time to decide, I was like, up until the day, I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then my friend convinced me to just say, you know, fuck it. Why, why yeah. not? And so I ended up going on, but it was, it was a little bit, a lot of, a lot of nerves and, and disbelief until I stepped out of limo. Then I was like, I really did this. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I, I wonder, I wonder if they like do that on purpose and tell you like, Hey, we might not choose you. We might not choose you. So then when they do choose you, you feel like, Oh, I have to do this. Like this is even, even in the back of their minds, they're like, he was going to be on no matter what. I wonder if they do that on purpose, just like make it seem like it's even more special. Yeah, there's a rhyme or reason to everything they do. Yeah. And I think uh, I think a, a large number of people do get booted at the end, it, even more so for the women, because a lot more women apply for the show than men do. For men, it's kind of like pulling teeth. Most yeah. people don't want to do it. <laughs> but for, for me, I think in the other guys, most people got confirmed like the week before that we ended up yeah. actually flying out so it is that's it, crazy it is quick turnaround. yeah that's a quick that's a real quick turnaround um when you show up night one i so just i've always thought you show up and you see a bunch of hot dudes like that has to be so intimidating just looking around like oh these are all just super attractive they pick the best of the best what's that yeah. like when you walk in you're like oh shit yeah it's not it's it's not even like being gay or anything it's just like you you recognize whenever there's another attractive man around they're all yeah. tall they're all very uh very very you know physically built stacked <laughs> and just have like a good demeanor about them so a lot of them are funny like you just pick good qualities of every corner of the states and you put them all together it's just a lot of i don't know testosterone it's just like yeah. we just like want to fight each other but it was daunting especially like if you don't talk to either of the women like the first night, it's 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 just a lot of that goes on to where you can get in your head and just kind of second second guess yourself and question like your 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 worth in the whole mix. But yeah, I feel like especially with a bunch of dudes, it's very competitive. But a lot of that stems from just like little insecurities, and especially with like a lot of people who are like again they they chose you to be there for a reason. So you can see it two ways. Like one. Oh, if all these guys are super attractive, they must think I'm super attractive. Yeah. I belong here. Or in the back of your mind, be like, I'm the odd one out. Like, they don't want me here. It'd yeah. be so, that would mess with me so much if I was in that position. It is. It's it. You, you get there and the setting is just so weird because you know you're there to hit on one girl. You know everybody else is there to hit on one yeah. girl. <laughs> and not only that, they're going to record you hitting on a girl. It's like imagine oh. yourself going up to a bar and as soon as you start talking to a girl, cameras come out and like, okay, we're going to show the world this. And then behind you is a line of another, like multiple guys. You don't have any of your friends there, nobody mm. to like psych you up. It's just all, you know, coming from yourself. And it's, it's from that standpoint, it's, it's a mind fuck for sure. Yeah. So yeah, you like, you, that's a good point. Like you don't have any of your boys there where well, you can be like, Hey, like I need help here. Like I'm stressed. Yeah. Like, who did, who quickly became that person for you? Like, oh, I got to go to you. Like, Hey man, I'm stressing. 
I think what most people did was like whenever we first went in the house, we were just like asking like, what's your name, where you're from. I kind of, you know, gravitated towards the Chicago guys quick because we had the most commonalities. And then outside mm -hmm. of that, uh, anybody that you have anything in common with or just familiar or seems cool, you kind of just you kind of start talking to them at first. And then as time goes on, you eventually talk to everybody else. But most people get like two or three guys the first night. And so I yeah. talked to the twins a lot and the Chicago guys. That was essentially it. Gotcha. Now you, so when did you find out that there were two bachelorettes? How early in the process, how late in the process was that? It was, it was the same time as everybody else. So when they announced okay. it on TV, they had us record our reactions and they used that as some of the intro for, um, season season 19 so yeah. <clears throat> i was just sitting at home uh watching it whenever they had said both of them i thought they were going to do a split again like you know like they did previously so i was like okay one season's going to be rachel one season's going to be gabby I'll pick from there but they were like at the same time so i was like <laughs> oh my god like i could just i could just sense the drama i was like they are just causing violence right now and i and i see which way it's going yeah. so i Go ahead. No, just say like how, and then how quickly do you like? All right, I like. Was it even before you went into the season? Like, I'm probably gonna lean towards Gabby, or were you like going in very open mind to both? I going into the season, I didn't know who I was leaning towards. I actually thought, uh, I thought Susie was gonna be the Bachelorette for a minute, and then I thought it was gonna be Gabby. I had no idea that it was gonna be Rachel. Uh, I thought it was either Gabby or or Susie, and then as like the finale was going on, I was like, there's no way that Susie doesn't win this. So then I kind of started shifting my, like my gears towards Chris Gabby, because just watching like the season, like her, her quirkiness and her humor was more so aligned with like mm -hmm. my personality. So like from jump, I figured that I would be more in tune with her, which is why whenever I got there, I was just like one way the whole time. Yeah. Um, now after, so like kind of fast forward to after you film everything, and there's a gap between after you film and then once it starts airing mm -hmm. during that gap, are you just like going over your head, possible scenarios of how they could have edited it? And what, <laughs> what's the worst case scenario you could have imagined for how they edit? Cause like there it's in their hands. Like they can make you look like a bad guy if they want you to, which is crazy. Oh my God. <clears throat> how mine was, I kind of was, I never had the thought that I was going to get a bad edit cause I didn't do anything crazy. And I didn't yeah. say anything that was pretty bad. And while you're going through filming, you kind of get a gist of like who's going to be portrayed in a bad light just for the amount of time that they spend like dealing with certain topics of drama. So I was like, I'm completely out of it. But I did go over my, I guess, my time on the show just like over and over to see like how things would look. Like if I look crazy or corny or just goofy, like that's all you have to think about oh. is, oh my God, this show's going to come out and I'm going to be on TV what the hell did I do? And then after a while, like right before the show even starts airing, you forget everything. It's like, yeah. what, did, what did you do three three months and three weeks ago? Like, tell me exactly yeah. what you did. You, you don't know. I mean, they film oh, you, but it's not like you get a reminder. So it's like, I forgot everything I did and it's about to come out. Like, so it's kind of like you're, you're remembering things as they go. And then you're also getting perspectives of what happened whenever you weren't around. Like, when you weren't in the room, what they said about you, like we didn't, we didn't, we weren't privy to any of that. So it was different. Now, when you are watching it back for me, that first episode, I would want to watch like by myself locked in my basement to make sure like I, I'm not a loser or something. But yeah. then after that, like, what was your, pro were you like big party first episode, everyone watch, or what was your process like going through, like watching it back? I think everybody did like a big part party. We we had this massive group uh, group chat and we were just kind of like pinging each other like, what are you going to do? But I, I essentially ended up getting like, <clears throat> I had to deal with one of my friends. She's a, she's a liquor rep and she has a relationship with one of the hotels here in Chicago. So I did in one of their, um, I guess, common areas, which was, yeah. it was pretty nice. And so I watched the first one, but I was also comfortable because I knew I wasn't going to get much time because I didn't talk to anybody. I was just kind of like in the background as like a sleeper that first episode. Yeah. <laughs> the second episode, I was nervous because that was my my one on one. But for the first one, like if I wasn't shown, like I didn't care. I just I knew I had like my limo entrance and I was going to get like small showings here and there. But like if you're not doing something or talking or dating one of the girls and it's kind of it's kind of stress free. 
Yeah. Is there anything that got cut or just didn't didn't make it that you wish? Hey, like I wish like America saw this side of me or saw this moment just because it was a cool moment, either between you and the guys or you and Gabby. Um, I guess there was a lot there. There's so much that goes on in a one on one because you essentially spend the whole day together. There was a lot of like in-depth talks that we had that I wish that was out there a little more but the way that they portrayed it with the time that they had like it did show a lot of our chemistry but we had a lot more goofy moments than what was shown on on camera like they show a lot of like the serious side but the way that the that our dates would go it would be like serious than joking like it was a good it was a good mix of touching on like deep topics <clears throat> and then also breaking it to make it like seem less like a show. So there was a lot of like personal moments there. <clears throat> so, yeah. I feel, I feel like uh Gabby's hilarious and that's why I was so oh. excited for her to like be the lead, but I was also nervous. I was like, they're going to try to like cut it down and like not let her personality show, which I think yeah. for the most part we got Gabby in that yeah. season which i was happy about because again yeah, she's I, as soon as we saw her the previous season i was like oh she's hilarious and I almost oh. i thought she was too funny for the show i yeah. was like she shouldn't be on here like she's like almost too good for this yeah. they don't need a comedian up there because she's hilarious is she as funny i'm assuming in person oh my gosh she is actually hilarious <laughs> like what what she's like on the show is what she's like in real life but even more so in real life she's just so down to earth she's so personable and whenever you talk to her you don't feel like you're on the show so she did a good job with like actually being a lead and and, and drawing in each uh each individual just from what i got when the whenever the other guys got back from talking to her, it always seemed like it went well. So I think she did a great job from that standpoint. And then also just being herself through the whole process. Now, I think you guys had probably one of the more like mature breakups I've seen on the show. Like it was just very real, which I think was hard for people to like watch almost. Cause like, this is a lot yeah. of tears and stuff. <laughs> did you, how blindsided were you in that moment? Was it like, I kind of see this coming or was it like, Oh shit, this is happening. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't see it coming at all. Like, I mean, <clears throat> going into it, like the other guys, they they were like kind of hyping me up. Like they were thinking that I was like the front runner for the most part. And I would say no. But in the back of my mind, whenever I got that second date card, I was like, maybe like I'm just being too hard on myself and I am doing better than I thought. Mm -hmm. So the second that I got the second date card, I was thinking like, OK, like we're going to progress in this. Like I have to start thinking about like future, like, you know, meeting family and so on and so forth. But I was completely blindsided. Damn. Like what, what they didn't show was just the amount of time where I was just speechless. Whenever she originally broke up with me on that bench, I didn't speak for like five minutes. My mouth was just yeah. open and I just stared off into the water. Like they had to snap me back into it. Cause I was just sitting there. Like I was just shaking my head like shit. And then when I came back, I was like, it's okay. Because I came back to the realization that, you know, there's, so many guys here in, in so many different circumstances. And I knew that my relationship wasn't the only one. So I just had more of a realistic view from that standpoint, but I was blindsided. Yeah, man. I mean, that makes it even worse now Like yeah. looking back at it. Um, when you left, did you have an idea of like, all right, if it's not me, it's probably this guy. Or did you have an idea of how that the season might end for maybe either of them? I figured I knew who the top two would be. I knew that it would either be between, um, Jason and Eric for mine, but for Rachel, I, for Rachel, I want to say I thought Zach was, was cleaning the floor. Um, I actually hmm. passed him whenever I was going on, um, going on my one-on-one. -on -one. I, I recognized that he had had his, he got selected for his cause we were completely separate on the boat, but they had messed up and we actually accidentally crossed paths. And I was like, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> oh boy, like congrats. I can congratulated him for a quick second. Then he did. I, but whenever I went home, uh, I was like, man, I went home and then I knew that he was still on his one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so I was like, okay, Zach's kind of just like taking this on a cakewalk, but it didn't end up happening like that. Now, there were obvious rumors, speaking of Zach, that there were rumors that you were going to be The Bachelor. And now I'm not going to ask you if you declined it because I feel like you would ask that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, hypothetically, if you did turn it down, how good did that feel to be like, I don't need you. I can find a nice lady by myself. It wasn't even from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm glad that I didn't didn't force it for something that's yeah. me because I would say. The worst, the worst reason to get into it is for is for fame or money or accolades. You generally have to 
have your heart all in it. And I just, and I just wasn't, you know, to be, to be in that mindset where there are, you know, upwards of 20, 26, 27 women who are uprooting their lives to find love. You have to be very hyper-focused and, and very in tune with what you want. So you don't end up hurting a lot of people. And if you do, then, you know, it's going to be even worse than never having done it. So I didn't, I didn't want to get into that uh, situation. Yeah. I knew that I wasn't ready. So I just kind of <clears throat> politely bowed out, you know, that's, that's honestly really impressive because I feel like you said, you have to go in with the right intentions, mm-hmm. but most people can convince themselves that they are ready for that mm-hmm. with the, in the back of their mind, knowing like I get to be the bachelor. Like that's yeah. a once in a lifetime thing. But also, like, I think that's very impressive of you. You're a better man than I am because I don't know if I could have turned that down. So good for you. Um, yeah, what about other? So you kind have you completely closed that door where like paradise, even if they come out for a bachelor later on, like have you closed that door and say, hey, I did it once, gave it a shot. I'll I'll try the real world for a little bit. Uh, for me, I'm definitely just in a in a real world mindset uh, yeah. for right now. Even if I, I mean, I I'm not even really to even say like either or because you know paradise is is another monster of itself. But mm-hmm. for now, I'm I'm more so just living in the here and now, and uh and just doing my own thing in life. So that's that's where yeah. I'm at. Fair enough. Now, yeah. uh, so you weren't surprised at all. Like it sounds like when Zach was selected as the lead, because if you thought he was going to go far with Rachel, you kind of had this a good idea. I think uh, I had an inkling on who it could have been, but for the most part, nobody really knows. I mean, sometimes they, I think just from what I've been told in the past, like sometimes they drag it out. Sometimes they make it like early, um, obviously an R and yeah, I, I don't think there's any one consistent way on how they choose them. Uh, I'm not, I have no idea how it's done, but uh, I had an idea that Zach was, was in the running because he just did so well during our season and he's such a and he's such a good guy like if you know him like he got a lot of a lot of hell from our season <laughs> but i think a lot of that in part is due because it's just really hard to capture so many stories whenever you have two leads and then so many guys mm-hmm. like time was really split like thankfully they got to know a lot about gabby and rachel because they did really well with editing but to know the men in that you know bubble as well it wasn't there really wasn't much time yeah, that is a crazy point because even in a normal season, you don't get enough time with these guys or whoever yeah. like whoever the majority is. Obviously, the focus is on the lead. Mm-hmm. And some of the guys get cut short. Some of the girls get cut short. You double that and it gets even trickier. It's yeah. a mess. Yeah. Um, with, so I saw you tweet it out once that Zach just didn't give you any spoilers for a season. There's no way. I'm calling bullshit. No, he was really, really adamant on not, uh, on not saying anything. I was like, "Damn, we boys, like, I'm not like <laughs> anything. I'm the last person to go out there and be like, this is how it goes." I think yeah. he was just being, he was being overly cautious. But yeah, I gave, I gave him shit for a little bit. I also didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. I had a, um, I had a, uh, a lunch with him like after he got back. And then I painted him a little bit, but I didn't want to be that guy that seemed like a, like I was fangirling because I genuinely just wanted to know how he was doing yeah. and stuff. So. Have you have you uh, seen him since the end of the season, since the finale? No, I saw him at the finale. Uh, I talked to him for a little bit, but he had to get on the road to do Good Morning America. So uh, after that, I met his family. I met uh, Katie's family. We were super sweet. Um, and then that was that was about it. I talked to him a couple times, but I haven't seen him. Oh, I forgot you were at the finale. I forgot yeah. about that. What, yeah. what was that like? Were they just like, hey, we'll we'll fly you out here, sit there and say a couple sentences? Yeah, they were like, you want to come, you know, support your boy? And I was like, yeah, I'd definitely be down. So I essentially just came out. It was a, it was a quick trip. So yeah, I, I literally went all the way out there to say one line. But yeah. I, like, I like being in that atmosphere. Being at the tell all is still like daunting for me. So when I was yeah. out there, I was like, oh, I had so much anxiety and it had nothing to do with me. But even talking, it's still like a little nerve wracking. Yeah, it just brings you back to that mindset. I'm yeah. sure. Once you're away from it for a little bit, you just like you go back and you're like, it's like oh, it was PTSD. You're like, yeah, oh man, like, I forgot. Oh my gosh! And I never been to a finale, so a finale's energy is a lot different from like a tell all because yeah. nobody there was like at the tell all. Nobody was in love. We were all guys that got booted kind of early, you know. Yeah. But whenever you're at the finale, the air is just like a lot thicker of just like yeah. people who just got hurt, people who feel wrong, and like all of that but for the most part ours was a little more chill outside of the you know just the typical drama that we had to address on the back end 
Yeah, no, it's yeah, it just feels so tense on TV. I think that's why most people love it. They're like, oh, I just can't. They yeah. want to, which is again, who who knows what that says about us as yeah. as the viewers, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, this is kind of random, but you once so I think it was on the show described your daughter as a human form of coffee, which yeah. I think is the greatest compliment you could ever. <laughs> like give someone that's incredible i think that just enca encapsulates someone so well yeah. uh so th this next uh question is brought to you by our sponsor java house coffee store okay. look at that i'm <laughs> good at my job look at that transition too. great at um it. so are you a coffee drinker yourself and what does that morning routine look like uh with caffeine or do you need like a, a bunch of it one cup you're good what, what's that like for you you know, I am uh, I'm definitely a coffee drinker. I usually take mine black. I got a French press last year, and it has changed my life. I get, like, the rinds. I put it in there. I press it. Like, there's a whole process. It's yeah. kind of like, I don't know, <clears throat> you pour it for me. So I just go through that, and then I get my day started. So I love I love – everyone has a different, like, morning routine if they're a coffee yeah. person. I personally – it's kind of weird. I will start – like my work so i work basically from home this is studio just like in my home okay. nice. um so i work from so i'll start for like 30 minutes my work for the day until i can realize oh i'm slow i'm still tired then i go, go get my coffee so mm -hmm. then i can i can literally see the difference in my like work like Production. oh i'm more energetic yeah. i'm i want to feel that difference so i wake up go get coffee i'll think like oh i'm just always energetic or whatever like ready to roar working yeah. at the same speed so i want to like feel that difference so yeah. i'm a little weird like that but i do what what are you hotter like do you ever go iced coffee yeah so i've been going crazy on like iced chai lattes yeah. i i yeah i have been going crazy over <laughs> dude i get me started on that but yeah ice i can't do ice during the winter i usually just just tailor it towards like whichever season i'm in so all summer i'm just gonna be iced i don't yeah I've, I've almost fully committed to iced coffee where I'm like really? 80% of the year. There will be some weeks in like December, January where like I just – I treat it like hot chocolate. I just need something mm -hmm. warm to hold. Yeah. But I've just almost fully converted. I'm like I'm in. I'm in on iced coffee. I yeah. love it. So is what it is. Um, What's the uh, – again, you don't have to answer this, but what's the current uh, dating situation like uh, for you? Things looking up? Things going well? What's What's the vibe like? Uh, I definitely haven't had like uh, any issues since the show. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm I, sure. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you've had no issues. No, honestly, I doubt. I haven't. I haven't been like talking to like dating any fans or anything like that. So yeah. I, I keep that like similar. After the show, I started dating like a close friend. Uh, so it's more so like someone I can trust outside of just like putting myself into the world and then I don't know being privy to something that I didn't have before and then you kind of you kind of know like i'm a guy like i know my scene you know whenever yeah. you get off the show and then it somehow seems like you're like getting like this like an upper tier now i don't trust it <laughs> i don't trust it i know i know my lane so i like that that self-aware like yeah like, oh, you you would have messaged me before the show you would have never talked to me before the show <laughs> right now I'm so right. then some guys some guys will take full advantage of that and be like mm -hmm. well not like take advantage but like jump at the opportunity you're like oh yeah. like maybe and then maybe i can charm you over with my personality after this yeah. so yeah but it's, that's an interesting dynamic because i'm sure like as soon as that show what was what was the point as the show was airing where you saw like the biggest uptick and just like conversation around you was it was it literally like the breakup or was it episodes before like when did you realize like my phone's blowing up? Like what's this is weird. My phone started blowing up whenever they announced the cast. So all my friends and okay. family. So it just takes one person to see it. And then they kind of disperse it amongst like the friends and family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in real life, I think I started noticing a change and just like people noticing me uh, after the, after the second episode, whenever I had all that screen time from, from the date. And then I was like, okay, yeah, like, life's a little bit different now it's not like i'm a super celebrity yeah. but people just noticed me yeah did you was there a little bit of like un, not uneasiness but like almost like pressure we're like oh like i i gotta behave a little different here like maybe at first we're like i feel like i'm walking on eggshells with everything i do once you because if you get that a little more like overnight i can feel like it can cause a little more anxiety that way yeah, I think I, I was kind of oblivious to a lot of it because I just kind of just like moving my own lane. Even if people see me, a lot of my friends will have to be like, yo, like they're staring at you. Yo, the only time that it would be awkward for me is if I look over and somebody's recording me and I didn't notice oh. that they were recording me and they were doing it for some time. Then I'm like, 
what did I do? Like, did they catch anything? Like, what What the hell? Like, did they catch me saying anything? Uh-huh. That stuff's creepy. Like, if you see somebody yeah. calling you, that's creepy. But for the most part, I don't really, I don't really do anything that I would cause myself alarm. Yeah, oh my gosh, I can imagine seeing someone record me. That yeah. that feel like, that feels like the step up. Where like, yeah. oh, I, I'm in a new atmosphere mm. now. Where like someone, because yeah. I'm on camera quite a bit. Like I, but I record myself. Like I'm mm. aware that that's happening. So yeah. I'm I'm comfortable in that situation. But if someone else is, if I'm just walking on the street, not if I'm not live or doing anything, that's weird. That's what I'm like. Ah, yeah. it's so <laughs> creepy, and it is an eerie feeling. You know that feeling that you get where you feel like somebody's watching you yeah and then you confirm that they were watching yeah. you with like a video i was, and they right. have it I was forever right. i was like ah oh. feels like you're being spied on non-stop whenever you leave your house so it's it's weird you should just pull your camera and start recording them too and just have like yeah, a showdown like, that way i got you <laughs> i got you I got um that. all right now a couple random thoughts here i saw somewhere some random article that your favorite movie is how to lose a guy in 10 days is that still true yeah, it's up there. It's okay. anything Matthew McConaughey. I think as far as like rom, I'm a big rom com guy. And that okay. movie's that movie's a staple. So yeah. that one, uh, yeah. All right. So the begs the question: Are you just like addicted to accelerated timelines in relationships? Because you got How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days, and then The Bachelorette is like How to Get a Girl in a Month. Like, <laughs> those are pretty. Those are pretty quick timelines. Is that like oh, your yeah, thing? No, I think I'm a hopeless romantic. I think that yeah. you know the. I think it's fun whenever two random people from different parts of the world just somehow just like click. I think it's amazing because you don't get that with a lot of people. So whenever you find somebody that gives you a spark, you just resonate with that and just like just just feel it. I don't know. So I think it's cool. I have two rom-com suggestions for you, too. I don't know if you've seen About Time. Have you seen that one? Isn't that the one where they like – the guy's like dying and he goes to Paris at the end or something or no, he, so basically it sounds weird, but like the guys in this family can time travel. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Isn't it through like, uh, like reading or something or what they have to go they in the do? closet. They have to yeah. go in the closet. Okay. Close it. Yeah. But I, yeah. that's my favorite movie of all a uh, rom-com of all time. Mm. I swear by it. And a more recent, I guess somewhat more recent one, The Big Sick. I don't know if you've seen that one. I have not seen The Big Sick. I, I think I saw the the previews to it. Though. Yeah. Oh, very, very good. Uh, Kumail Nanjiani, I think is his name. Um, he got super buff for a couple movies, but he was, he's hilarious, that movie. Um, highly recommend that one. I think that's one of an, a more of an underrated one that people haven't seen as much, but okay. I think that one's incredible. Definitely check that one out. All right. Um, No, I have another – so I was going to get to this in a little bit, but I have an idea actually for a Bachelor rom-com that I'm trying to just throw out there to people, see if uh, (laughs) someone wants to run with it. Because I think that's the perfect premise for a rom-com movie where maybe like it's – they film it like a reality television show and then the leads are like faking it for fame or whatever and then they actually fall in love with each other. You know what I mean? Like that's the setup of the movie. I feel like that could work, something like that. No, that I think that's a good that's a good premise. But you use actual cast from the show, oh, but they yeah. have to act terribly. Like it has to be like a uh, not another teen movie type vibes. Like, yeah, just yeah. I or or like, yeah, like have you seen a uh, uh, Jury Duty, the new show? Oh my god, I keep seeing it come up in Dude. my TikTok, and it looks hilarious. It's the funniest show I've seen <laughs> in so long, and it's incredible. But it'd be really funny if they do a similar setup where like everyone's an actor but one of like they set up like the bachelor everyone's an oh. actor but one of the guys and they keep making yeah. it far and they're just like super confused but <laughs> you highly recommend jury duty you gotta check that out okay what platform is that on uh amazon prime uh okay. you watch it free with ads though if you don't have prime i think it's through like okay. free v or something um okay. but oh it's it's hilarious i think the last two episodes come out in a couple of days and i can't wait all so right, I'm, hot. I'm just gonna just keep giving you suggestions that the yeah. next like 30 minutes or whatever. I remember, remember yeah. all of it. Um, all right, let's talk about the power rankings that I put out, which is kind okay. of how we got connected here. Let's get into so it. you're currently in the uh better at TikTok than me category, okay. which yeah. is basically where I put people like, Oh, you seem cool and funny, <laughs> but I don't I don't know you yet. So yeah, that, so I think naturally you're gonna bump up. But I kind of want to hear your case on why you should be higher. My case on why I should be higher. Hmm. 
Well, what are the criteria? What are, what are we so, judging based off? I think if I have a rubric out, I'll be able to state yeah, my yeah. case a little better. Yeah, well, number – so 1A is Hannah, Hannah G. So A, she's invited me to her wedding. Uh, oh. B, B uh, she's – I've met her in person, so that's a good criteria. Okay. Uh, C, she's agreed to do a solo pod with me, and she never does podcasts. And uh, four, she's nice to me. Uh, okay. Number 1B is Dylan for all those same reasons except mm-hmm. that he's not Hannah. Uh, mm-hmm. The next category is the wise guys. These are like – just above friends of the program where like they've been on the show before and they've just gone a little above and beyond with support that we have, uh, who we have Cassandra and, uh, Katie Thurston. Uh, then we have friends of the program. These are just people who've been on consistent supporters, (laughs) uh, Kerpa and Brittany. Then we have drink drinking buddies, which is like guys just want to grab a drink with, uh, mm-hmm. Justin takes the batch. Who's just a, not even on the show oh, cover. I love he's Justin. He's a great guy. He's a Justin's great guy. my guy. He is uh, great guy. He's the best. And then Logan and then Brendan. And then we have better at TikTok than me. And you're in that category. Okay. We have Logan and Brendan. How are Logan and Brendan above, above me? Have they done the pod? Well, yeah. So they've been on the show before. Oh, okay. So I might, I think naturally I will bump you up into that category after okay. this, unless you completely like, fuck me over in the last five minutes like curse me out for something i don't know that could still happen okay um but should i move you above drinking buddies or you think you're situated right there i feel like i should be above one i'm from the midwest so we have okay that, you know we have that report good going. if you come to chicago i can be your drinking buddy that's, so that's you know make it into real life i've been on the pod but i'll come on again so it'll okay be, we'll start building that relationship so okay so okay. i'm i'm looking at putting you yeah i, I might okay so uh secret time i'm probably just gonna make new categories each month just to have okay. fun with it yeah. uh i might i'll put you above logan just to mess with logan because logan okay. would hate that mm-hmm. uh and yeah we'll put you pretty close to friends of the program category i think okay. we can work with that i gonna do that i just gotta um, eventually work my way to the top five yeah you know that's tough it's getting competitive now that's yeah. the thing that's why i like making <laughs> fake power rankings just people love competition <laughs> people people want to be in the top regardless yeah. of whatever it is and it's it's just a trick to get people to be nice to me it's awesome yeah. Like, yeah, i'm gonna start doing that with my friends i'm just gonna send out a weekly text <laughs> yeah. these are the important people in my life in sequential order yeah fix it if you want yeah, if you and if you want to move up, Venmo me twenty bucks, like yeah. uh, like stuff like that, and then people yeah. are like, I don't want to be the top, and then then all yeah. of a sudden your friends are a little nicer to you. So mm-hmm. that's just a life hack right there that I'm yeah. I'm putting out there. Um, all right, so I'll work on that for the uh, what would that be the May power rankings. We'll definitely uh, we'll definitely Appreciate see it. some some movement by you. Okay. Uh, I'm all right, you should, yeah. It, it, again, people, the, all of America is going to be watching. They're ready for the next power rankings. Um, the, uh, this is another segment I like to do on this show where it's called "Say Something Nice About My Friends." Uh, okay. This is someone you mentioned earlier today, Dustin. So, Dustin, Dustin and I have a uh, long history that he probably doesn't even remember. But like two years ago during COVID and stuff, I was trying to get invited to Dylan and Hannah's wedding, which somehow came to fruition. We made it. <laughs> But Dustin actually helped me a little bit. He was commenting. He was boosting the the videos and all that stuff. Really? D- Dustin was a big help there. He's never been on the show, but I do appreciate Dustin. So mm-hmm. you have the floor. Say something nice about Dustin. Oh, okay. So Dustin, uh, he's just a very big helper. He's a facilitator. He's like, you ever know a guy that just knows everybody that does something, you know, in every field, that's him. So yeah. I can see how you connect you with them. He's the one that got me on the show. He's just a, he's just a big facilitator and a great guy. And it just speaks to his character. So Dustin is a really good person and he's oh, one yeah. of my best friends. So I, I might have to get him on the show here soon. So put I'll, I'll get him on the, I'll get on, I'll get him on the show if you want. I'll, yeah. t- I'll talk. Well, you can talk to him too. Yeah. But, we'll, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll get something that works we'll here. Um, all right. No, last kind of idea I have for you, but, uh, it's very random. When you look your name up, uh, sometimes it gets conflated with Nathan Mitchell. Do you know who that is? The he's actor? like a Canadian actor, right? Yeah. So yeah. he's he's in Ginny and Georgia, which is like my guilty pleasure show, which I'm I'm not afraid to admit it. Like I love that show. Yeah. Uh, but he's in that show. I was thinking maybe you could work your way into getting a cameo in the show or maybe just working with them. I would, I would have to do something. I did Google my name to see and he <laughs> comes up before me. So he's, yeah. he's, doing, he's doing better in life than me right now. I don't know how I can surpass him, but I'll reach out to him and be like, hey, man, yeah. like, like 
like for like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to work on your SEO, you know, get your yeah. name up there on those search results above mm-hmm. him. I think maybe this will help. I'll just try. I'll just Google and name a bunch and then yeah. like, maybe that'll boost you up there. That'll do it. I can't, I can't do it myself. I have to create a bot or something to click on <laughs> yeah. all the cool, all the cool tags. I'll say like, I don't, I don't blame you. I would Google myself all the time, dude. If I, like, I would just, I'd be addicted to Googling myself. Trust me. No, you wouldn't. We, uh, the, the batch guys. So whenever we were first going through it, we were like super, like kind of, uh, self-conscious about like everyone's take on us. And so we would go to Reddit and that was the worst decision ever. Like, Oh just man. Did. Reddit is, <laughs> Reddit is the worst. It's hell. It is hell. Ever. I think Jesus would have wouldn't have even made it through Reddit. Oh, honestly, no way, no he way. He wouldn't have even made it through Reddit. So I was like, I put down, I I stopped using Reddit probably like three weeks into into my season. You know, I I was like, I can't do it. It's giving me too much anxiety. My other buddy still is still on there quite a bit, but I was like, how how are you doing it? Yeah, you I know? see. I, I want I want someone in the Bachelor world to just go full internet troll. And reply yeah. to everyone, just like just funny, quit like just get into the depths of it, into Reddit, into Twitter, all that. Just like go full. That'd be yeah. so funny for us. Again, mental health wise, might not be the best decision. Yeah, but you're sacrificing yourself. Yeah, sometimes you gotta do it for the bit, I guess. So yeah, I, I don't know. Um, all right. Well, I want to wrap up here with the last question. It's a question I ask everyone who comes on. Uh, I do appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you taking the power ranking seriously as everyone should uh, <laughs> aim, aim to be at the top, which is yeah. everyone's goal. Uh, but I ask everyone who comes on here, what gets you up in the morning? You can answer it however you want, whatever, whatever comes to mind. Oh man. What gets me up in the morning is just my, my, I found my purpose like early on and it's genuinely helping other people. Whenever I uh, have the the time, the opportunity, like I'm, I'm very much a family person, but that extends to, to friends and then people and, and even strangers. If I help someone, <clears throat> I get a genuine sense of compersion and I feel like I'm making the world better. So that's what wakes me up in the morning, whether I'm groggy, like even if you just smile at someone and make their day or say, thank you, gratitude goes so far when you could be the only glimmer of light in someone's life that day. So every day is important from that sense. That's what gets me up. Hell yeah. No, I love that. Now I know you were uh, involved with maybe some fundraisers, charities, anything you want to shout out, get people, uh, put them on the map. Absolutely. So shy gives back is one as a foundation in Chicago that helps, um, you know, elevate the community. They do uh, funding for teachers. So teachers have like the appropriate tools in the classroom. They do um, food drives. They do uh, work with veterans. They just do a lot in the community. Whenever we hear so much bad stuff about Chicago, people don't really highlight the people that are really making a difference. So Shy gives back. There are others as well. That's the one that I'm with right now. I'm going to bounce around to a couple other ones that are Chicago based so I can just bring more attention to, you know, the positivity in Chicago. So people are just uh, kind of jaded by the negativity that the media pushes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Nate, for coming on. I appreciate you taking the time. No, thanks. I appreciate you, my guy. Have a good one.